Hello everyone, this is Dong Rui Zhen, an undergraduate neuroscientist from Xi'an, China, as well as a visiting student currently studying at Columbia University. Today I am going to present to you an ongoing project called HEX with the title The Psychophysics of Insight-Based Learning in Humans. In order to maximize both of our efforts, please play our video game before starting watching this talk. Thank you. Okay. Suppose you have played our game. No matter how you feel about that, let me first briefly introduce our team for this project. I was supervised under Professor Gautam Agarwal from last summer and received tremendous help from Mani Hamidi, now a doctoral student at Max Planck. This game was developed by Gautam and his colleagues, listed here. Today, neural networks can solve a variety of complex tasks at or beyond human level performance sometimes. However, AIs are hungrier at data than humans do. One of the advantages on humans seems to be our ability to infer and apply generalized principles from limited experience when solving complex puzzles. We therefore developed a game called Hext inspired by the traveling salesman program, serve as a task for the purpose of measuring these kinds of skills of human with a considerable amount of scientific level of control. One key feature here is we offer no verbal instructions regarding the rules of our game, so agents need to figure out how to conquer each level based on their own experience and analysis. We are focusing on the different processes of learning between humans and AIs here. This is letting people to consider how learning takes place. We can conceptualize learning lines in a spectrum between two poles, named bottom-up and top-down process, respectively. How our brain learns should be considered as a combination of the two. We admit that there are some sorts of bottom-up feature in learning of humans where heavier learning is associated, but there are also very good arguments that the way which we learn as humans has more top-down priority in it. In this talk, I'm going to pick up how we characterize the top-down feature in the human learning process through analyzing the data we collected from HEXT. Taking the psychophysics-inspired approach to humans' intelligence behaviors, we are quantitatively investigating how agents react and behave in spaces of stimuli and solutions. In our game, the difficulty of a task can be controlled by the geometric structure of the stimuli space, that is, the number and relative position of pieces. Both of the stimulus and the solution spaces tend to become more complicated along with levels in an exponentially increased manner. My research work focused on the analysis of level 1 data. The Easiest level data is not trivial because it contains information on how people search for optimal solutions with minimal instructions. As you may have noticed, the goal of this game is to collect the triangles, so-called targets, at their largest size. At level 1, players are only asked to collect one target. After collecting data according to the coordinates they tapped or swiped, we encoded their actions with letters. For example, D represents the tap action on the target low, while P means swiping there. A corresponding amount of reward and penalty is assigned to each puzzling attempt by players. The action sequence DP will receive a reward of 1 with penalty here, as an example. We first focused on how people are reacting at the game at their very beginning interaction with Hex. The heat map displayed here is telling us people are more likely to take action on the target size, regardless of that orientation. This is somehow suggesting that human agents are adopting an object-centric reference frame rather than a board-centric one. What is strengthening this statement is the diagonality of the transition matrix. We constructed transition matrix as displayed. The top figure is showing transitions of more than 3,000 players who won the level 1. 
The matrix obtained is close to a diagonal one, and this quasi-diagonality is also implying people are adapting the object-centric reference frame. Human players are often in a dilemma wandering around their original action sequences or leap to a completely different ones. The transition diagram shown here demonstrates how all players and each individual player are choosing their next step of action, as we can observe that they usually sample a highly restricted subset of the policy space. At the same time, some actions P and DP as examples are inherently preferred by players than others. We therefore suggest that they draw from a universal prior based on these kinds of evidence. Back to the transition matrix, we further compared two matrices, one with real data collected from human agents, and the other one is new model data generated from random sampling model. The comparison between the two matrices indicates that humans have a tendency to repeatedly sample the same suboptimal policy despite negative feedback. We summarized this tendency as the word stickiness, and we believe the stickiness in human learning comes from a behavior that they are doing hypothesis testing when playing the game. The data we collected demonstrates more interesting features when we compare it to the results collected from model-free reinforcement learning agents called GPQ learning networks. Unlike DQNs, which learn at a relatively slow and steady pace, humans arrive at the optimal policy suddenly and unpredictably, which inspire us to associate it with a phenomenon called epiphany. While we are assuming the top-down feature of human learning and their balance on exploration and exploitation helping them to reach the epiphany quicker, we need more investigations. So far, I have discussed how we get inspired from psychophysics to review the distinctively salutary nature of human learning, and I am planning to move the project forward to the following directions shown here. Thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions and feedback. See you.